It has been a number of years since I talked extensively about feeding cats a vegan diet. I have like a 30 minute video. I look noticeably younger. <laughs> this was the first time I watched an old video of mine, like within the last 10 years or so where I went, oh, things have changed. <laughs> anyway, a couple of studies have come out since then. The one I want to focus on in this video is this one, vegan versus meat-based cat food. Guardian reported health outcomes in 1,369 cats after control controlling for feline demographic factors. What a pithy title. So again, 1,369 cats total, 127 of whom were vegan, so 9%. Based on medication use, number of veterinary visits, as well as some other factors, the researchers concluded that the vegan cats tended to be healthier. So I'll talk about this specific study first and any problems I see. There are um, a number of issues, and then I'll talk about whether or not I've revised my position on feeding cats a vegan diet. So the data comes in the form of a survey. As the title says, Guardian reported, the pet's guardians were asked a series of questions about the pet's health and their diet. Even the veterinarian assessment comes from the Guardian. Think about your veterinarian. Which of the following would most likely describe their opinions about your animal's medical condition over the previous 12 months? This is an issue because memories are faulty. I've talked about this a lot when we're talking about nutrition studies and using these food questionnaire surveys, but it's also a potential problem in this case because there may be an incentive to lie. We're talking about vegan cats. Now, very likely if you are feeding a cat vegan, you are vegan yourself, very likely for ethical reasons. You know how damaging the pet food industry is, and there's a good chance you want to reduce that damage by not only feeding your cat vegan, but helping others or making it appear possible to others so that they would also feed their cats vegan. If your cat is not doing well on a vegan diet, whether it's because of the diet or not, you may not want to admit that and potentially put people off of feeding their cats vegan. To their credit, the researchers did try to control for this by asking any pet health questions before asking diet questions. So they asked about the pet's health and then they asked what types of food the pets eat. So as not to uh, tip the <laughs> participant, the guardian off, so to speak. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. But yeah, it would have been nice to have more objective measures. They do ask about medication use, which is a lot more objective than just, do you think your pet's healthy? Do you think your vet thinks your pet's healthy? <laughs> but an actual assessment by a vet would have been nice. Obviously, that is a lot more involved, requires a lot more money. It's going to be harder to get a good sample size, enough participants, enough people who are willing to bring their pets in. This is why surveys like this are done. They're actually doable. I am disappointed they don't have data on the length of time that the vegan cats in the study had been on a vegan diet because I think most people's concerns with feeding cats vegan and dogs as well is with the long term, right? How will these animals fare years down the line without animal products? Maybe a large number of the cats in the study were pretty new to the diet. Maybe not. Maybe they'd been on the diet for years. Who knows? 41% of all cats, so the vegan and the meat-fed cats, got treats at least once per day, and 33% of the vegan cats went outdoors. Now with the treats, I would guess that the vegan cats, probably most of the vegan cats are being fed vegan treats as well, but we don't know. There's no info on the, the composition of the treats. They were just asked if they were given treats. And the hunting, I, there's a good chance that <laughs> maybe all of that, that 30% of the vegan cats um, were hunting. Now, whether that would make a substantial difference, I find that hard to believe. In my experience, cats who have a regular source of food rarely ever eat what they kill. They just kill it and leave it. If a cat eating a meat-based diet is not doing well for whatever reason, it's pretty unlikely the owner is going to switch that cat to a vegan diet. But if a cat isn't doing well on a vegan diet, there's probably a much higher chance the owner, the guardian, is going to switch that cat back to a conventional meat-containing diet. There's a very good chance they're going to contribute whatever is happening with the cat to the diet. My point is maybe the vegan cats in this study, for the most part, are the cats who do well on a vegan diet. Finally, all of the results, except for one, 
in the study are non-significant, meaning that in every analysis, the p-value is greater than 0.05. This doesn't mean the results are meaningless. It doesn't mean that there is absolutely no difference between the vegan cats and the meat-fed cats. That's not what p-value measures. But a non-significant result should caution us from interpreting basically anything from the study. As researchers often say, more research is needed. Interestingly, you will fail to find more research is needed or similar cautionary wording in this paper. Instead, we get, considering these results overall, cats fed vegan diets tended to be healthier than cats fed meat-based diets. This trend was clear and consistent. You may have heard of p-value spin. I think that's what psychologist Stuart Ritchie calls it. Even if you haven't, you've most certainly seen it if you read scientific literature. It's when a result isn't statistically significant, yet the authors frame it in a way that suggests it is. So phrases like almost significant, trending toward significant, all but significant. <laughs> These are real phrases from real papers. Here's a list. I mean, it's insane how many there are. I think my favorite is not yet significant. He's not significant yet, but he'll get there. Give him a chance. <laughs> this is understandable and I am sympathetic. There is a lot of pressure put on researchers to get results, positive results, right? Journals want to see significance in more ways than one. And researchers more often than not are not statisticians and they may not even understand what p-value really measures. Regardless, it's bad science. Saying all but significant or trending toward or not yet significant, it's not good. I bring this up because this is kind of what we see with this paper, but not really. This is actually pretty new for me. <laughs> the authors aren't quite feigning significance. They're not using phrases like trending toward significance. They're saying that the results are non-significant, but they're also saying that that doesn't really matter and instead are making inferences based on effect size. And they use this little grading system here. So for example, when an analysis renders p-value higher than 0.05, so statistically non-significant, yet the effect size, the difference between meat-fed and vegan cats is greater than 25%, then they will say it has a strong tendency. So there was a strong tendency for vegan cats to suffer less illness, again, according to their guardians, even though the p-value is 0.1446. I'm not saying effect size isn't important. It's very important and it's generally considered bad form, so to speak, to only report p-value without effect size. A good example is that aspirin study, p-value on point, effect size, tiny. In this case, seeing only the p-value suggests that there are meaningful differences between the groups when in reality, not so much. I'm also not saying p-value is like some holy grail. Statisticians disagree on its usefulness. Some saying we should tighten it to 0.005. Some saying we should get rid of it altogether. But I've never seen a statistician favor something like this. Using p-values while claiming they don't actually matter and then making strong qualitative statements based on effect sizes using categories you made up. I can't see this as anything other than spin. They are trying to give the impression that vegan cats are healthier than meat-fed cats. They're trying to give the impression that this is what their study says. I wonder why they would do that. It's not like the lead author is vegan and has been advocating for vegan pets for years. Total coincidence, I'm sure. And it's all really stupid because when it comes to vegan cats, not statistically significant is newsworthy enough. We're constantly hearing how bad vegan is for cats, how unhealthy vegan cats must be, and yet there's no indication that these cats are suffering. Not just in this study, but this other recent one too. This one published in 2021. They looked at 187 vegan cats. These cats were vegan on average three and a half years, yet no difference was found between them and the meat-fed cats. Contrary to expectations, owners perceive 
perceived no body system or disorder to be at particular risk with feeding a plant-based diet to cats. This systematic review from this year came to a similar conclusion. There is little evidence of adverse effects arising in dogs and cats on vegan diets. In addition, some of the evidence on adverse health impacts is contradicted in other studies. Given the lack of large population-based studies, a cautious approach is recommended. If guardians wish to implement a vegan diet, it is recommended that commercial foods are used. So I'm not convinced that vegan cats are healthier. I mean, they might be. It wouldn't be too shocking that meat is not great for cats either. But the evidence we have so far does not support that claim, does not suggest vegan cats may be healthier. However, I think it's unlikely at this point, even, you know, given all the limitations that these are surveys, etc., I think it's unlikely that vegan cats are suffering. I think it's highly likely that some cats, many cats, maybe most cats, can eat a vegan diet and be healthy. Assuming it's a well-formulated vegan cat food, of course. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe meat-fed cats are indeed healthier. How much healthier? Likely not much, again, assuming that they are healthier. So feeding cats meat without even trying to put them on vegan foods means you're okay with your cats maybe being slightly healthier at the expense of animal lives, animal suffering. I don't see how that's justifiable. I think the responsible, ethical thing to do is to try to put in a good faith effort to feed cats vegan. While we think of cats as ultra finicky, the authors did do a separate study using the same data, the same survey information, and found vegan cat food to be just as palatable. Again, maybe these are the cats who stuck with it, the cats who actually like the food, whereas many more cats, you know, couldn't stand it. Anecdotally, all three of my male cats, Sniff and McGurk and Finnegan, they really liked the, oh shit, what brand was it? Whatever vegan uh, cat food kibble I had, they all liked it. But yeah, cats are finicky, right? I mean, it's, it's a major reason why I have no intention of caring for a cat again. There is a possibly high chance I would have to feed him or her animals. Another worry with vegan cats that I used to have, still have maybe, is with UTIs, uh, specifically for male cats, male vegan cats. Now, neither of these studies found an association there, which is reassuring, kind of. Again, a lot of limitations here. This final thing is unrelated to these studies specifically, but I want to mention it because it's so commonly listed as a reason not to feed cats vegan. Several studies have shown that commercially available vegan cat foods rarely meet all of a cat's nutritional needs. This was written by a veterinarian for Pet MD, and she is right. These two recent studies, one on vegan pet food found in Germany and another in Brazil, found all of the products, eight total, to be deficient in at least one nutrient. You know, what else is deficient? Conventional non-vegan pet food. This study in the UK found only 30 out of the 80 dry foods tested were fully compliant with EU guidelines, and only 6 out of 97 wet foods were compliant. Many had either insufficient, excessive, or inappropriate balance of minerals, which, if fed exclusively for a long period of time, could underpin a host of clinical diseases in dogs and cats, including skeletal, neurological, or dermatological disease. Furthermore, foods with relatively high levels of fish or fish derivatives also had high levels of undesirable metal elements such as arsenic, which bioaccumulate in internal organs and may contribute toward a plethora of subclinical disease states. Just saying. In conclusion, given these two recent studies as well as the review, I feel more comfortable feeding cats a vegan diet. Again, if I did did I say that? If I did have cats, I would absolutely do my best to feed them vegan. Again, a commercial fortified brand, of course. And even if that didn't work out for whatever reason, I would try to incorporate vegan food as much as possible, right? Trying to reduce the meat as much as possible. Unfortunately, I don't have any brand recommendations. Again, I don't have cats. I haven't had a cat since 2017. But I will say, stay far, far away from evolution diet and anything sold by this guy. I talk about that more in my previous video, if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to know what you think. I'm sure many of you are still uh, highly uncomfortable with feeding cats vegan because they are obligate 
carnivores and it's unnatural, blah, blah, blah. I think those arguments are super unconvincing, especially considering what most people feed their cats. <laughs> it's not like dry kibble that includes meat is natural. Meat from chicken and pigs and cows? What? Anyway, please like the video if you did and subscribe if you want to see new stuff from me. It really helps out the channel and hit the bell and turn on your notifications if you do all that. To be fair, I don't. I don't have notifications on for anyone. I just find them obnoxious. So I get it. Thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post five, no, not five. I do post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. I just posted the controversial one for September. Not really a controversial one this time. It's responding to all of the Q&A questions I got from Patreon. There are a couple that are maybe slightly controversial. Anyway, thanks again, guys. New video soon. I've washed with only conditioner for the last few days, and I'm remembering why I stopped doing that. <laughs> it's very, very flat and oily. It doesn't move around much, which is nice, and I have less of a desire to, like, touch it because... <laughs> And I had to cut my hair. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. When I'm just wearing my hair up all the time, you know, what's the point? I don't know why I can't stand long hair anymore. It's just so irritating to me. I need it like up off me all the time. It used to be only when I would work out, I'd put it up and then I'd leave it down all day. Even in the Memphis heat, you know, I'd leave it down. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Can't do it.